Today's story is called Trains. There are four key words that we should know before we read this story. The first key word is engine. The definition for engine is the part of a machine that makes it go. The next key word is caboose. A caboose is the last car on a train. The third key word is workers. Workers are people that do hard tasks. And the fourth and final key word is tracks. Tracks are what a train moves on. Our next task is to write a prediction. We're going to use the title of the story, Trains, and the four key words, as well as the picture you see on the page, to make a prediction about what we're going to read. So let me think. Hmm. Well, I have a picture of a train engine, and I have the word engine, and I have the word caboose, workers, and tracks. So I, I, I want to make, you know, at least one sentence, maybe two sentences about trains. Hmm. A, here's, here's my first sentence, I think. A train has... an engine. Here's my first sentence. I use the capital in the beginning and a period at the end. I'm going to write one more sentence. A train also has also has a caboose. So, I've written, a train has an engine, a train also has a caboose. That's my prediction about the story Trains. What would your prediction be? Now, I'm going to read the story. Trains take things to many places. They take food to the city. They take new cars from city to city. Trains take people places too. Some people eat on trains. Some people sleep on trains too. A long time ago many people rode on trains. Now more people ride in cars. A train has many wheels. The wheels run on tracks. The engine is the first car on a train. It pulls the train on the tracks. The caboose is the last car. The caboose is for the workers. They eat in the caboose. They sleep in the caboose too. I'm going to read the story one more time. This time, as I read it, I will underline the sentence. After I've underlined the sentence, try to read it to yourself. Here we go. Trains take things to many places. They take food to the city. Now you read the sentence. They take new cars from city to city. Now read the red sentence. Trains take people places too. Read the blue sentence. 
Some people eat on trains. Read the green sentence now. Some people sleep on trains too. Try this next sentence. A long time ago, many people rode on trains. Now, more people ride in cars. A train has many wheels. The wheels run on tracks. The engine is the first car on a train. It pulls the train on the tracks. The caboose is the last car. The caboose is for the workers. They eat in the caboose. They sleep in the caboose too. I'd like you to pause the video and to practice reading this story at least three times. I'm going to read this story one more time. Trains take things to many places. They take food to the city. They take new cars from city to city. Trains take people places too. Some people eat on trains. Some people sleep on trains too. A long time ago, many people rode on trains. Now, more people ride in cars. A train has many wheels. The wheels run on tracks. The engine is the first car on a train. It pulls the train on the tracks. The caboose is the last car. The caboose is for the workers. They eat in the caboose. They sleep in the caboose too. Now what I'd like you to do are to answer the questions that you see on the page. I will read each question and each answer choice. On a piece of paper, please mark the, what you think is the correct answer. For instance, for number one, if you think choice C is correct, on your sheet of paper you would write the letter C next to the number one. Here we go. Number one. What is most of this story about? Is it A, what the engine of a train does? B, what trains do and how they look? C, where workers sleep on trains? Or D, who rides on trains? Number two, what do more people ride in now? Is it A, cars, B, trains, C, engines, or D, cabooses? Mark your answer. For number three, where do workers eat and sleep? Is it A, in the boxcar, B, in the caboose, C, in the engine, or D, by the tracks? Write down your answer. Number four, what pulls the train on the tracks? 
Is it A, the caboose? B, the engine? C, the workers? Or D, the cars? Write your response. For question number five, you need to write a complete sentence. The question asks, what can people do on trains? I'd like you to begin your answer like so. People can and then you complete the rest of the sentence. Please hit pause on the video and write your sentence. Now I would like us to go over the, your answers. Let's check our answers. Number one, what is most of this story about? Well, I have to remind myself that this type of question, we want to know what the main idea is. A story usually is composed of a main idea and some details. The details tell us about the main idea. So when I look at these choices, letter B is the best choice. So I would circle letter B. Number two. What do more people ride in now? When I look at the choices, I see cars, trains, engines, and cambooses. Well, choice C and choice D are just parts of trains. And if I were to look back in the text, I would remember that the text told us that more people now ride in cars. So we would circle choice A. Question number three asks, where do workers eat and sleep? Is it A in the boxcar, B in the caboose, C in the engine, or D by the tracks? Well, if I look back in the story, I can find in the text the answer. And the choice is, the best choice is letter B in the caboose. Because workers eat and sleep in the caboose. Number four asks, what pulls the train on the tracks? And as I look at the choices, I say, Letter A, the caboose, letter B, the engine, letter C, the workers, and letter D, the cars. Well, I can eliminate some of these choices. I know that people don't pull trains, and I know that cars don't pull trains. So I have to determine whether it's the caboose or the engine. And I know from question number three that the caboose is where people sleep. The workers sleep and eat there. So it can't be letter A, so it must be choice B. For question number five, I asked you to write a complete sentence. The best way that I can think of responding to this question is to go back to the text. So the story is called Trains, and in the story it talks about some of the things that people can do on trains. I'm going to reread the story. It says, some people eat on trains. Some people sleep on trains. A long time ago, many people rode on trains. Well, here are three things that people do on trains. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take those ideas and write a complete sentence. And I may use some of my own words. People can travel on trains.
people can also eat. I'm trains. Remember, you should write three to five sentences. This will probably take you anywhere from five to ten minutes. Pause the video, write your sentences, and then check back. Here are three sentences of my own. My first sentence. People. ship things like cars and food on trains. My next sentence is going to be like this. People can travel on trains. My next sentence will tell you something about trains. Trains have an engine and a caboose. Now, I know I told you just a minute or two ago that I was going to write three sentences, but since I wrote them so quickly, I think I'm going to add one more sentence. Here we go. People who work on trains eat and sleep in the caboose. So, I'm going to read to you my three sentences, actually four sentences, since I added the last one. And as I'm reading it, I'm going to pause and look at my sentences to make sure I didn't make any mistakes. And if I did, I'm, I'm going to correct them, okay? So I'm going to reread it. People ship things like cars and food on trains. People can travel on trains. Trains have an engine and a caboose. People who work on trains eat and sleep in the caboose. Hmm. I'm just going to read that silently to myself just to make sure. So. As I look back at my sentences, I know I have four sentences. I want to make sure each sentence has a period. So if I have four sentences, I should have four periods. So I'm going to look at that. I have one, two, oops, two, three, and four. All right, good. I have four periods. The next thing I'm going to pay attention to is whether I started each sentence with a capital letter. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to look at the first. I'm going to put a little dot just so you can see what I'm looking at. Let's see. The first sentence starts with the word people, and that's a capital P. Second sentence also begins with the word people, and that's a capital P. And then the third sentence begins with a capital T. Very good. 
Okay. And then my final sentence, my fourth sentence, also begins with a capital P. All right, good. Now, I also want to look at my sentences for spelling errors and also just to make sure I wrote them neatly. You know, I think for the most part, my, as far as I can tell, I, I, I spelled every, all my words correctly and I wrote as neatly as I could. It's a little hard writing on a computer screen, but I think I did a pretty good job. You can tell the difference between my capital letters and my lowercase letters. You notice that I have enough space between my words, you know? Looks like there's either one letter or two letter size spacing, so that looks pretty good. Hmm, what else would I want to pay attention to? I guess that's pretty good. So, I'm just going to read to you one more time what I wrote. And then I, what I'd like you to do is to review your own writing. Look at your sentences and do the same thing that I just did. Ask yourself about capital letters and lowercase letters. Spacing. Uh, ask yourself, so what do you put a period at the end of your sentences? And then, did you spell all your words correctly? Or... Were there any words missing? Or did you want to change some of your words? All of those are good things to look for. So here's my, my story, my little retail again. People ship things like cars and food on trains. People can travel on trains. Trains have an engine and a caboose. People who work on trains eat and sleep in the caboose. How did your sentences go? I look forward to hearing them.